When we start working with the concepts of limits, it's very important for us to get an intuitive feel for what a limit of a function as x approaches a specific value is asking us to give them. Now when we're looking at limit questions, the first thing we want to pay attention to is that there's three different components that go along with the limit. There's the LIM, which is the shorthand for the word limit. There's the function that you're supposed to pay attention to, whether they give it as a rule or whether they give it as a name so that we'll then go and look at a graph for that function. And then there is the values that are subscripted underneath the limit of the variable that's the independent variable and what that variable is approaching. And so when they ask us to find the value of a limit, we want to know what the values of the function are getting closer and closer to as we get as close as we choose to this value for the independent variable. So wording this in terms of the symbols and what it means in just our vocabulary, we want to find the limit of the function values as x gets as close as we please to this value of negative 3 for that particular situation. So what I've done in this problem to do the intuitive kind of approach to a limit is I've graphed a piecewise defined function here and asked several different limit questions associated with that graph. Now we have here that our graph is our y equal f of x. So the overall picture is your function. So when we have the limit of the function values, I'll be looking here for the um, function values, as x gets infinitely close to negative 3 for our first example. So we want to find on the x's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And the limit question says, as I get infinitely close to an x value of negative 3 from both sides, what are my function values approaching? And if you notice, my function values are approaching a value of 1 as I get infinitely close to 3 on both sides. So the answer to this first limit question is 1. Okay, the next one is the limit of my function values as x gets as close as we please to negative 1 and then there's a minus sign after the negative 1. That's just a one-sided limit. And when there's a minus sign after it, you are to a go really close to or infinitely close to that negative 1 from the left-hand side. So I find my x value of negative 1. Because it's a minus after, I'm coming in from the left-hand side. So I want to know what are the function values approaching as I get closer and closer and closer to that negative 1 from the left-hand side. It's approaching a y value of 3. How about the limit of the function values as x approaches negative 1 from the right? If there's a positive number after the numeral in the um, values of your independent variable, what they're getting closer and closer to, then that means coming in from the right. So here's my x value of negative 1. And if I get closer and closer to my x value of negative 1 just on the right-hand side, it's going or approaching a function value of 1. Now, if they ask me the limit of my function as x approaches negative 1, and they don't have a plus or minus sign after the negative 1 there, that means I have to come in from both sides. And remember, this limit is a value, a specific value, that the function values are approaching as you come in to the negative 1 from both sides. Well, as I approach negative 1 from both sides, my left-hand limit's going to 3, my right-hand limit's going to 1, they're not going to the same unique value, and so that limit does not exist. If you look at x approaching a specific numerical value, and the limit of the functions as you approach it from the left is a different number than as you approach it from the right, then the overall limit as you approach that x value from both sides does not exist. So that's one way that limits might not exist if the left-hand limit is a different value than the right-hand limit. Now this next one is the limit of your function values as x approaches 1, so there's a positive 1, from the left. 
So I find my x value of 1, and I'm going to get closer and closer to it as x approaches 1 from the left. As I notice, my function values are going down forever along this vertical asymptote, so they're going off to negative infinity. So does not exist is what we have for this limit because it doesn't approach a specific fixed number, it goes off to negative infinity. That's called unbounded behavior and another way that limits don't exist. Now, sometimes they might write that the limit as x approaches negative 1 of this, sorry, as x approaches 1 from the left of this particular function is negative infinity, and it's not saying it exists. Unbounded behavior there, the limit does not exist, but it's telling you in the manner in which it doesn't exist. Let's look at the limit as the, of the function values as x approaches 1 from the right. So here's my x value of 1, I'm coming in from the right, and my function values are going off to positive infinity. Again, a does not exist for my limit, but they may write the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of my function has that unbounded behavior that they're going off to positive infinity. Three more to look at. The next one is the limit of my function values as x approaches 4 from the left. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 is my x value. I need to approach it from the left. So from the left, my y's are going to a value of 1. The limit of my function values as x approaches 4 from the right. Well, as x approaches 4 from the right, my function values are going to 1. And so in this case, the limit of my function as x approaches 4, remember without the sign after, it's from both sides. Well, from both sides, my y values are approaching 1. Now, just as a parting comment, notice that when I'm asking the limit questions, I'm asking what the function values are doing as your x's get as close as we choose to that x value, but not what's happening right at that x value. So what are the y's getting closer and closer to as we get infinitely close to the x value is what you want to think about when you're answering these limit questions. Don't be distracted by the function value right at the x. That's not the issue with the limits is what are the, fact, the function values approaching as you get infinitely close to that x. Well, I hope this has helped a little bit in giving you a better feel for limits. In another segment, we'll look at properties of limits and how we can find our limits if we're given an algebraic expression to take the limits of.